I learned from this that maybe when we think of the, the, the distinction between a primary and a reconstruction, it's really about the right patient. We gotta decide who this person is, what patient is, and what the right anatomy may be. The question that comes by, uh, also comes mind, uh, back to me is so much about ACL repair has been around, can we restore normal kinematics, normal biomechanics, normal anatomy? And we've heard storylines going from double bundle technique to the anatomic technique to the anatomic double bundle thing. You know, there's all kinds of approaches. So, you know, it's a matter of also understanding, can we restore anatomy the way it was? And I make the assumption you probably can. And are there ways in which we can further enhance? So what is the issue of biologics that might come into further enhancing things? Clearly there's a model to say, well, listen, for patients, it may not be good for everyone, but in cost constrained areas, primary repair seems very compelling to me because of the, the sort of the price differential, if you can show effectiveness. Lots and lots to unpack, but the bigger challenge always is as you nicely put out, there's very few trials. I mean, if any, right now, it's, it's data. We need more data. So let's maybe at this point unpack some of these concepts. Let me first help uh, maybe explain to me a little bit more. Why do you think, Umar, um, mid-substance tears don't do as well than proximal? Is it all about blood supply? Is that the primary factor? Or are there other things you think that have that have made the indication for a primary repair more proximal than mid-substance? I think, uh, I think uh, more very good questions. Uh, the answer to the last question I'll give first, and I sure. think Grigor recently described very nicely uh, how he tells the patient about which ACL to be repaired. So imagine yourself, you've got a horse tail and you cut the horse tail from the middle and you ask somebody to suture it together it's really, really difficult to suture the two ends of the horse tail. But if you ask somebody to cut the horse from the bone, it's much more easier to reattach the whole bunch back onto it. The same concept is with ACL. The mid-substance tear, the stress, the amount of stress in the suture, the way they were causing tension effect was failing it more comparing to the proximal tear. And uh, the reason I started doing ACL repair is because I used to see a lot of my patients who had type one tear and I really felt frustrated when I was doing my training and I was doing a consultant post in England that these patients had such a juicy vascular tissue still attached onto the femoral side and I had to use the nibber and the upbiter to cut them and then reconstruct a new ACL. So I used to think why we cannot just put it back with an anchor like I used to do my double row repair or a single row shoulder repair. And then obviously one day I started reading about it. I started reading literature. And when I moved back to Pakistan, I saw more and more of those patients rather than complete avulsion. They still have the tissue attached, as you can see. They still have positive anterior draw test. Vascularity is very good. And I started giving a go by doing a repair, by discussing with patients. And patients took the idea very positively. First of all, the cost was much cheaper comparing to reconstruction in which you have to put an endo button on the top, screw on the bottom, much more bigger operation comparing to repair. And once in the first five patients, when I saw six months results to be amazing, they were pain-free, they were walking much better biomechanically, obviously the mechanical receptor is still there. I felt that this is something we should embark on the journey. And then when colleagues started discussing about it more and more like Gregor de Phyllis, like Gordon McKay and other guys, I thought that why we should not do this more and bring some data from Pakistan. The majority of the data so far published is from one company, but I wanted to do an independent data, unbiased, all by myself, without knowing what type of anchor it is. And I found that actually it's the biology that heals, not the instruments or implants. You put the tissue back into its footprint, it naturally heals. And as you can see on the MRI scan, how nicely the whole fibers were still contained on six months MRI scan. And we don't have a single failure so far. I always keep my reconstruction tray available. If I see that during surgery, this patient doesn't have a suitable tissue, I reconstruct them straight away. But if I feel that they have a suitable ligament with good vascularity, it heals. And our study shown that in our histological study, which interestingly almost in, is, is been accepted by the knee journal, that this vascularity around the ACL tissue is sufficiently enough that it can heal back itself. So much around uh, treatment has been focused on the anatomic ACL. This would seem to me very straightforward, and maybe I've, you know, maybe I'm oversimplifying it. But getting the anatomy right when you're repairing is going to be much, much, 
you're more likely to get the anatomy right with the repair, I would think, than you are with the reconstruction. Has that been the experience and is that one of the purported advantages? I think a, a, a very valid question because obviously when you see the ligament attachment where it is, it's much more easier to put the drill hole there right. comparing to when you don't know and you use a red and resident ridge, sometimes you use 10 right. o'clock, sometimes right. you use 9.30, sometimes you use 3 o'clock depending on right and left. But right. when you have an ACL repair, you know where you are putting your drill because you can see where the footprint is. Yeah. So 100% right, it's much more anatomical and it's much more easier to do repair comparing to reconstruction. Right. Let me just open it up to also to, to, to Mohammed to hear as well. Mohammed, your experience, um, you know, early on right now and your enthusiasm for exploring primary, what's that based on? Well, as Dr. Amar previously has said, it's about cost. Basically, we, we are from Pakistan and cost is a big issue. And secondly, we have a population that is mostly comprising of the youth and we are football and critic for cricket fanatics. So we do see a lot of patients. Uh, if I sit in my clinics and I see around about 10 to 15 patients that have an ACL injury and we can't do anything about it in the government hospital because of the cost. Obviously, as Dr. Omar said, reconstruction is far more expensive but if you go to a repair, it's a lot cheaper and it yields better results. And the current data is showing that. Uh, there has been a systematic review as well, uh, just recently, a few years back. Uh, and I would suggest that I think the future of the ACL is ACL repair for the proximal years, that is. And we need to get into an RCT and an international collaboration at which you're very good at Mohit. If we can do something like that and get a large data on it, I think that would be really good. Well, I think there's two things you bring up. One is what happens with, you know, in these situations. So you know, when we look at these situations, it's what happens in the natural history, right? So if left untreated, you know, do yeah. like are there situations where they just never heal or they heal? And has there been data that suggests that if left yeah. untreated, some people do okay. I mean, and we know that storyline a little bit. Then there's primary yeah. repair, and then there's the reconstruction side of things. You could almost argue that you could get away with starting yeah. a very large observational data set. We've been talking about this, you know, when we were at the last um, uh, big meeting in Sikot in Oman. You know, uh, Omar, when we chatted, we said, you know, maybe maybe we need to be doing yeah. more. Maybe we need to be doing a big, large, global ACL, international ACL registry of sorts, or some sort of data set. And explore. Are you aware of large data sets right now that have AC uh, uh, where, where you can evaluate some of these questions beforehand before you jump to an RCT? I think uh, in England they have ACL registry, they have osteotomy registry, but we, I don't know that till date we have any other country who is doing ACL registry as far as I know. Uh, England, yes, they have started ACL registry and it's becoming compulsory that I have to put my ACL reconstruction there. With regards to repair, it is really difficult in developed countries comparing to developing countries. So in developed countries, if you run a trial, it will be a randomized control trial comparing to ACL repair versus reconstruction. The challenge is that we don't get patients so quickly. Somebody yeah. has an ACL injury, yeah. they don't come straight away. So it's very difficult to bring those patients in six weeks and do the repair, select them proximal tear, age, multiple factors. But I feel that even if we start doing a series followed by prospective comparative studies, and then maybe move to a randomized control trial yeah, or a right. multi-central trial, yeah. it'll be much easier. They're just before uh, finishing this, I think there are two candidates who are asking question more. If yeah, you, yeah. If you want yeah, that's good. So, so, uh, uh, so, so I think, uh, well, you know, before we jump in, if you have a question, I think we've had two questions. If you could just unmute and come to video and ask that question again, that'd be wonderful. Please. So I think Supper, Supper was okay. the first person to ask the question. Can you unmute and uh, ask the question, please? Thank you both for that was a very interesting talk. Um, I'm a resident of, at McMaster and it was very interesting to hear that. Uh, I'm just wondering if you find clinically post-op, do you find a difference in stability between patients who had a ACL repair and are healed and patients where you do an ACL recon and, and they're healed? Uh, there is 100% big difference uh, for a simple fact. When you do reconstruction, no matter how top-notch ACL surgeon you are, you always feel that your ACL is not as tight. You always feel that you have a little bit of laxity, which is natural because ligament always stretch a bit in few months down the line. 
I, I'm, I'm also only surgeon in the world who started Peronius Longus randomized control trial. So I'm doing the difference between hamstring versus Peronius. And there is no doubt that the Peronius graft is much more stiffer and stronger comparing to hamstring. But when I'm examining an ACL repair patient comparing to ACL reconstruction patient, definitely, obviously we, do, we haven't done KT1000 testing, but definitely on clinical examination, they are much more stronger, much more stable. They go to do uh, exercise and fitness quicker and they are much more faster in rehab comparing to reconstruction. And it is natural. You are drilling a tunnel through the tibia. You're drilling a tunnel from a femur comparing to just putting a single anchor. You have less pain. You have much more proprioceptive fibers to feel that your knee is much more natural. You bend your knee much better comparing to a reconstruction. Interesting. Okay. Um, we have a second question. Yeah, please. So second question is from Khalid. Khalid, can you please come on the video and ask us the question? It will be nice to see you and introduce yourself if you don't mind. Yeah, sure, no problem. So, sorry, just give me a sec. Yeah, it's working. Uh, so, morning to all. Good evening to to uh, to everyone. So, uh, my question would be regarding the uh, uh, the primary ACL repair. Would it be beneficial for athletes like footballers, uh, basketball players, and cricket players to start on primary ACL repair then? the ACL reconstruction? Uh, a very important and a, and a very scientific question. Now, so far the data has shown that uh, doing ACL repair is much more valuable in patients who are less pro. So for example, if you are a first class cricket player, first class hockey or whatever, I would not prefer doing repair on them. I would prefer reconstruction and I like to add biology like Mo mentioned, I put stem cell injection, I use fiber tape to increase the um, uh, load to failure on the graft. Uh, I prefer doing ACL repair in patients who are over 25, uh, preferably over 30, recreational sports player, um, not very professional. And these will be my suitable candidate to do repair because they want to go back to work. They want to go do some time occasional sports. If somebody comes to me like a professional, like two days ago, I did a, a gold medalist, kabaddi uh, uh, player, which I don't know how to explain kabaddi. Mo maybe explain that much more easier. So kabaddi is a type of wrestling. Wrestling, wrestling, wrestling yeah. Uh, wrestling, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So wrestler. So I did a ACL reconstruction. He was only 22 uh, and he was 140 kg. So I did uh, uh, ACL reconstruction with fiber tape and I used a stem cell rather than repair. So I would not consider doing repair in a much more uh, professional sportsman. Till now, maybe in a few years down the line, the results will be different. Right. Let me jump thank in and ask you, because, oh, oh, go ahead, go ahead, go, go ahead, Khalid, go ahead. No, no, just, um, just uh, thanking uh, Dr. Omer. No, yeah. listen, you brought up um, stem cells a couple of times. How, how important for you as biological care in your practice when it comes to ACL uh, primary repair. So are all your ACLs getting some sort of bio biological enhancement? And if they aren't, who gets it, who doesn't? Like what, what's your algorithm? I would prefer putting stem cell in all my patients who are doing arthroscopic procedure because now we have enough data to show that it does work. Question is that how long, how much effective it is, and have we got a strong data to support that it actually makes a huge difference? Yes, it does. There are many studies now to show that ACL, uh, when you put during ACL reconstruction <laughs> stem cell injection, it causes much more better graft integration. It has shown much more better homogeneous graft. Uh, the study done by Sonnery Cotet also showed that people who have put PRP injection, when they did a reduced uh, surgery on arthroscopy, they found much more bigger synovial infiltration around them. So there is no doubt that I see a clear difference. We haven't done the study so far on, on putting stem cell injection or PRP into the knee after ACL reconstruction. But on my clinical experience in the last four years working in Pakistan, I have seen a big difference when I put a stem cell injection PRP with ACL reconstruction comparing to without EPRP, they're much more, they are much more prone to recover much faster. The knee swelling is much less, the pain is much less, and they're much more easier on their knee. Uh, scientifically, there are many papers more to support this evidence that stem cell injection actually does enhance healing of graft. Uh, regarding failure, we don't have the data yet. Yeah, so I mean, the one thing I would say is in Canada, in Canada right now, stem cells, you, you can't get access to stem cells in Canada. However, PRP is in a different category and there has been uh, RCTs done. I believe there's one happening right now in Canada where they're looking at ACL repair and, and uh, PRP. I think the future really is we have to test these. 
So you have a very strong biological rationale. You have a strong hypothesis. What's the next step? I mean, what do we have to do when we're talking about revisiting what, as you said, back to the future, right? Going backwards in a way and looking at fundamentals and principles and principles that around the world, maybe, you know, many aren't doing. Let me ask you this. How many, um, for those of you who are currently in training, uh, how much, how much do you know about primary ACL repair when you're studying for exams and you're preparing? So I see Sepri here, I see Khalid here, some others. How, how, how much in the literature and how much is it discussed that even primary repair is even considered an option for you? I, I've heard very little about so far um, in terms of any ACL cases that I've seen come up either real life cases or exam scenario practice cases. I have, I've heard very little about it as an option um, to be considered. Right. And that's, and that, and that gets back to the point of how do we, uh, as with anything, right? I mean, uh, you know, you, you have, um, you have an expert here who's saying, you know, I believe very strongly in this. So how do we, how do we appropriately get that message out? And I think the big challenge right now is that there's not enough data that's out there. So there's few people doing it, have good experiences with it and, you know, you have to be the champion, I guess, you know, Umar now, and I think, uh, get that information out and you've got to get papers out. I think uh, Mo, we are doing our case series. Once the yeah. 16 months or 18 yeah. months are close by, then we will start yeah. writing the paper up because it's too early. Right. We have got only 12 months results. I wanted yeah. to push it up to 18 months to two years. Sure. Uh, I think it's all about selecting the right patient. It's all about that an experienced surgeon who is doing ACL reconstruction for many years should embark on the journey of repair. I would never recommend a young surgeon who has not done a lot of ACLs should straight away jump and do repairs because we are still at the infantile stage of advanced ACL repair. Open ACL repair was done many years ago, but advanced ACL repair. We still don't know what's the best method of doing repair. Either it's internal brace, either it's bridge enhanced ACL, either it's DIS, internal brace, we don't know. Every individual surgeon is publishing their own case series. Maybe we need to have a consensus group. So I did recommend it that to Grigor that he has done the most biggest number of ACL. We should make a consensus group of a repairer. They call them the repairer like me. So the repairer group should join together and maybe put up a, together a consensus together or some sort of evidence with their case series and publish work together to support that ACL repair does has a strong uh, stand in uh, healing or saving the ACL, just like meniscus. We never used to repair meniscus. We used to take them out. Now we repair every meniscus from ramp lesion to root repair to meniscal transplant. And that shows that in the early 70s and 60s, meniscus were removed. And now we are repairing meniscus. Exactly the same thing we used to remove ACL and reconstruct them. Now we are repairing it. The question is that one will be the right time to make it as a most popular or a common procedure like reconstruction. I think in the next two to three years, you will see many publications coming to support ACL repair. As I said, the biggest challenge in what's the best way of doing repair. That will be the biggest, biggest challenge. Oh, I, I, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, I mean, what we have to sort out at this point is getting information out. You know this literature very well, Omar. So what would you approximate is the total clinical experience on primary ACL repair? Are we talking a few hundred published patients, a few thousand published patients? Where, what is the breadth of the at least identifiable evidence on this topic? Uh, Mo, this is obviously a, a big, big question to answer so easily, yeah. especially yeah. sitting in front of sitting yeah, in front yeah. of a man who is no, no, who no. god of research. No, no, no. Uh, I'm just, I'm like, I'm curious, right? Because the you do a comparison. You do yeah. a comparison. Uh, you do a comparison between two different procedures. So reconstruction, ninety thousand reconstruction is done in UK. More yeah. than three hundred thousand reconstruction done in USA. How many repairs we do? Maybe hundred. So yeah. there is a many, many years lacking behind. But I personally feel even if we have hundred ACL repairs in one country. 100 ACL repair in another country. The beauty about ACL repair is that we are doing it in India. We are doing it in Pakistan. I know my colleague from India, Sachin, he's doing it in India. I do it in Pakistan. There is a guy who does in Singapore. We got somebody in Canada. We got somebody in USA. So if we all are producing our independent results, that will give much more. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, yeah. Evidence yeah, to support point. that actually ACL repair works. Yeah. The issue is that we always get. Yeah. No, go ahead. The said, issue is that we always get data from developed countries. 
we, we talked about this, that we always get data from developed countries. Yeah. We always talk about WOMAC score, IKDC score, COOS score from England, from Canada, but we never talk about that from Pakistan. A lady yeah. who's sitting on the toilet, she never need to do jumping. She never need to do her shoot a light. Uh, yeah. uh, so we have different social economic class. Oh, for sure. In for Pakistan, sure, sure. when I do ACL repair, they don't do the same thing which somebody does after ACL repair in Canada. So when I'm doing ACL repair here, they are very different when they go right. home. They want to have a pain-free, stable knee so they can do some golf, they can drive car, they can drive their bike, they go to work and that's their requirement. So yeah. maybe ACL repair is much more beneficial for them. Yeah, and I, and, and I see your point. I mean, I think one of the big things I've heard from both of you is cost. So in patients who otherwise would not have an uh, uh, opportunity to get some uh, restoration of function under the assumption that natural history of doing nothing is much worse than doing either a repair or reconstruction. If you think the big driver is cost effectiveness, then that is a very good target to be talking about. Because I mean, it, the question that would come out in, I think in many groups would, might just simply be the following, which is if money is not an object, what do you offer patients? If money is not an issue, what do you offer patients? And the argument you're making, Umar, is well, you know, I still get very good outcomes, uh, and may, you know, and, and you've probably gone over that learning curve. So there's a, the learning curve of doing something that, you know, that you're, you're finding your outcomes are pretty comparable. But for the average individual who's starting, you know, what is going to be sort of the trade-off for them? And so maybe, that, maybe what this is, is not that you're wrong or not that they're wrong, or you're both right in a different way. It's what's the appropriate algorithm that, in, that encompasses more than just technique and outcomes, but also patients' values, patients' preferences, patients' circumstances. I wonder if, I wonder if the happy medium in all of this eventually, once we get more data, is going to be there is no reconstruction for all, there is no non-operative treatment for all, and there is no primary for all. It's a matter of deciding in the algorithm where that appropriate patient fits in, going right back to the first five statements we made, which is right biology, right subgroup, right anatomy, right approach, right technique for the right circumstances. I think it's just another tool, another tool yeah. in my box. Yeah. So yeah. previously we used to do conservative management, ACL reconstruction, yeah. and now we got another tool in our box and that is repair. Right. How much do we use that tool? That depends on my experience, on individual right. experience, on the volume of ACL they see, because you know that even in a lot of countries, you will have very few surgeons who have such a massive influx of ACL patients coming toward them. So you don't see that much volume comparing to uh, some people. Uh, so if you are doing a lot of ACLs, yeah. you will see those type of patients which will require repair. If you do very few ACLs, you will have much less patients and you will do more reconstruction. Got it. So it depends on how, what's, what, what's the volume of work you're doing. Yep. Okay. That's very good. Is there anyone else who had a comment or a question? I we're in the last few minutes. So I, before we close out, I just wanted to make sure that everyone gets a chance if they had a question. I know it was a small group, but it was on purpose. And we're going to be putting this out to a lot of people. Muhammad Adil, I think, is a good friend of ours from England. Excellent. I hope that he... Excellent. Zainab, do you have... Zainab is our research fellow from oh, Karachi. Oh, superb. superb. He's doing the data collection. Excellent. Zainab, do you have any question? No. <laughs> it's crystal clear. We all know about this. <laughs> Yeah, right. already know she's doing all yeah, the data she, collection. Yeah, she's doing the connection, right, right. So <laughs> that's very good. That's very good. So, but it was a lovely, lovely session. Thank you so much to Dr. Umar Bhatt and Dr. Tahir for such lovely session. Thanks a lot. Excellent. I mean, I mean, the key thing right now is, is that it was, we've got to get more and more people like you around the world engaged in collecting data. And when we do that, we'll be able to really move this forward because there's no shortage of opportunity it's just we need the appropriate teams and you know and we have you've heard right now there's great teams right now here that we should do something with so this is really really interesting stuff well, thank you very much mo it was well, amazing yeah, i think it was yeah. really good on that note i mean you know the purpose of these insights have been to you know be able to hear from um, accomplished surgeons hear from early career surgeons um, talk to in trainees and try to get us talking about issues that we don't normally talk about. So once again, thank you for, for doing something and bringing another issue in our mind uh, around uh, ACL repair. I think it's a provocative topic. I think there's lots of opportunity for evidence and, and uh, in increasing our knowledge and working together. So, uh, you know, just a, a wonderful uh, discussion. So thank you so much for uh, being part of this ortho evidence insights uh, uh, event.
Thank you very much. Take care, everyone. Thank you very much, Mo. Thank right, you, everyone. Take care. Bye -bye. Take care. Thank you.